Hi, my name is Hans Brunings. Although the year 2050 seems far away, it is only one generation away, so people born today will be in their 30s. While it is just around the corner, I suspect this world will be very different. Europe aims to make a transition to a low-carbon society by 2050, cutting greenhouse gas emissions by more than four-fifths of 1990 levels. We also plan to use natural resources much more efficiently and strengthen rather than degrade the ecosystems we rely on. In short, we want to live well within the limits of the planet. But taking planetary boundaries seriously means we need to look very differently at how we use natural resources. To illustrate this point, let's first look at living standards and quality of life. On this graph, each dot represents a country. Developing countries generally score lower than richer countries on the Human Development Index. So we could say these richer countries at the top right are living well. But the real question is, is this within the limits of the planet? The answer for the moment is no. The poorer countries at the bottom left are living within the limits of the planet, while no country manages to provide a high quality of life within those planetary boundaries. In the 20th century, the model of development has focused on moving people from poor to rich, while the biggest challenge of the 21st century will be to ensure that development does not exceed the limits of the planet. This tells me that we need to be ambitious in our thinking, going beyond what has worked in the past. In the past, environmental policies have largely focused on improving efficiency. And this has been very successful. For example, policies have successfully reduced cars' fuel consumption and CO2 emissions. But in the long run, this may not be enough. The number of cars in circulation has been growing constantly since 1990. Can we really fix the environmental impacts of our mobility system if this trend continues? Truly addressing the issue may mean moving beyond the internal combustion engine, changing car ownership models, and even changing the way we build our cities and create mobility needs. This type of thinking can extend to other areas as well. For example, our consumption of goods. Do we all need to own power tools? or should we be able to lease and use them more easily? It comes down to rethinking what we really need. Do I need a drill or do I want a hole in the wall? Thinking in different ways can encourage a new search in innovation, perhaps comparable to the innovation seen in the communications world in the last few decades. So living well is not just an environmental idea. It is about creating the society we want.